fly this week called the Tufts Indispensable. I ran across this fly in Sylvester Neem's book, Two Centuries of Soft Hackled Flies. Found it very interesting. Started to do a little bit more research into it. And as it turns out, I think the original Tufts Indispensable was a dry fly. Most of the versions uh, that I've seen people tie and, and write about refer to a dry fly version. And even in Ray Bergman's book, Trout, he has it listed as a dry fly and it actually is tied with the tail and, and, and a little bit different than this. So I don't know if this is just the soft tackle version because there are lots of flies out there that start as one particular fly and somebody adapts it to a, a soft tackle or a nymph or a streamer version or something like that. The other interesting thing is the Sylvester Neves book has Tupps spelled with two P's, T-U-P-P -P apostrophe S. Most of the other spellings that I've seen are just with one P. So I don't know if that's just a typo or intentional. I doubt it's a conspiracy theory. Anyway, something kind of interesting. If anybody knows out there, has any information about that, that would be interesting to note. So anyway, this is the Tupps Indispensable. Interesting fly, the way uh, it's tied and put together. I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to start the Tufts Indispensable by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3906 in a size 14. Go ahead and debarb the hook. Now I'll attach my tying thread. Tying thread for this is a silk. This is a primrose silk, uh, pure sauce, gossamer silk that I'm using for this. Because of that, I'm going to have to wax the thread. So I'm going to run my thread a good 10 inches or so through my wax a couple of times and then run it through my fingers. This just simply distributes the wax on the thread nice and even. Gives it a little bit more gripping strength and helps the, uh, the silk thread in the tying process. Attach my thread behind the eye of the hook run my thread and touching turns down the hook shank just past the point of the hook. I'm not going to go all the way down to the end of the shank just yet. Now the tying materials for this are basically three things. There's some tying thread, some dubbing, and the hackle. Um, the tying thread is a, is a part of the original fly and I think if you look at some of the dry fly versions of this there's a yellow area towards the back, or even most of the uh, abdomen area of the fly is in a yellow color. And on some dry flies, it's even like a yellow dubbing. And then the thorax area is more of a pinkish color dubbing. I'm going by the soft hackle version that's in Sylvester Neem's book, Two Centuries of Soft Hackled Flies. And it does not show a pronounced yellow area in the back of the fly. But because of these Clyde style flies, they're, they're created so sparse that the yellow thread does show through. So I've created some dubbing. The recipe calls for a pinkish wool dubbing. You could certainly get some pink wool these days, um, even some other dubbing like a life cycle dubbing in a, a light sh uh, pink shade if you wanted to. I created my own. This is some white wool and red wool mixed. It's a three to one ratio. And you'll see that when this is put on, it's the, the red is so sparse that it gives it kind of a pink look to it. But you don't have to make your own. If you want to just use some pink dubbing, go right ahead. Again, this is a Clyde style fly. And one of the trademarks of this style of soft tackle is they're very, very sparse. So I'm only putting just a little bit of dubbing on here. As you can see, um, there's not much on there at all. 
and I've left it oh, about a good quarter of an inch or so from the hook. And the reason for that is that as I start to wrap this in, my yellow thread will go down to the end of the shank. Just gives me a few wraps of bare yellow thread to get down to the end of the shank to then start the body, the sparse body. You'll notice that it's, it is very, very sparse. There's just not much to it. You'll end up with your thread about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. This is where we'll tie in our hackle. I like to trim away any extra long fibers. The hackle on this calls for a ginger hen hackle or even a what they call a honey dun. I've seen some recipes where they even use almost a white, like a light cream colored hackle. I'm using some uh, ginger hen hackles here. I'm going to select a feather, start peeling away the fibers that are too long that I don't need, and then start measuring the length of the longest barbs, making certain that I keep those no more than about a hook length long. Grabbing the tip with my hackle pliers, I don't need a real full collar on this, so I'm actually going to go about halfway down that tip, stroking these fibers back. I only want just a few wraps. Cut away the tip of that to leave just a little anchor, and then I'll tie that in right behind the eye of the hook. Mind your thread, thread wraps because this silk thread is thicker than most of our modern threads these days. And I'll polymer this in and, and then tie it off. Starting behind the eye of the hook, I'll make the head of the fly. It does not have to be a large pronounced head. Add in a three or four turn whip finish. In this case, my thread broke off as I was putting it under tension, which sometimes happens. You can pop the rest of that rachis off, and our collar is complete. A little bit of head cement on both sides of the head there. That will soak down into the thread wraps, reinforcing that a little bit. And our Tups Indispensable is complete at least the soft tackle version. So I found this an interesting fly, especially when I started researching it more. I like the coloring on it. The, the pink is something I haven't seen in a whole lot of wet flies. Uh, and it was just very interesting to, to do the research and find out about it. I would be very interested if somebody knew why it is in Sylvester Neem's book that Tufts is spelled with two P's, where everywhere else that I've read it's just one P. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the Tufts Indispensable. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. 
If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm.